another playoff push. We're here in the uh, Tucson Arena. Why not bring on the voice of the Tucson Rollers, Tom Carnahan. Tom, thanks for taking some time with me tonight. Absolutely. Tom, tell me a little bit about where we're at right now, which is a uh, clinching moment for the uh, for the program right now. They can actually clinch the first playoff right now, can't they? Yeah, this is the uh, first trip to the playoffs for the franchise in their history and their first chance to ever close out a playoff series tonight here in Game 4. Great crowd is going to be on hand. The team has been playing really well, especially coming off Wednesday's Game 3 win, a 6 nothing win. I will say this, though, San Jose is going to bring their best tonight because you don't embarrass a team like that and not get a pushback. So tell me what your first thought was when you came into the arena Wednesday night, saw the white t-shirts around the arena, saw the true white out here in Tucson. What did you think? It looked great. Uh, the building was so much brighter. Everybody was commenting on it, even during morning skate while they were putting the shirts out. It just looked fantastic. And it gave this place an atmosphere that Wednesday night, not that it's ever bad at Tucson Arena, but I think it helped pick it up a notch. And we're going to have the whiteout going again here tonight. People are still buzzing about Wednesday night, so hopefully that carries right over into tonight's game. You know, it was unusual in a playoff hockey, and I talked to Aiden Hill about that a couple of weeks ago, but when the Roadrunners decided to go on the road for the first two games having the advantage, what was the mindset behind that from your, your vantage point? Pretty simple is that we'd won 24 or 34 road games this year. We're a very good road hockey team. So going on the road, getting a split, and coming home, now all the deciding games are in your building. The other one from a business side, I don't know how much this played in, but it gives you a week to sell tickets. Right. Um, so that also helps for the first round of the playoffs for anybody. Uh, when you don't know who your opponent is, to have that week head start is something nice to have for the ticket side. Tom, is there any fear that they might lose the first two games and come back here facing elimination? I mean, yes, there's always that fear, but you still got three at home. But uh, again, because they've been so good on the road, I don't think that entered anyone's mind. A split was the worst case scenario. Talk a little bit about this roster right now. I told uh, Coach Matt Ryan, I said, I don't know how you pick out your roster to, to put on the ice every night, but that's a challenge right now with the way everybody's playing, isn't it? It, it is, and they're not changing anything for Game 4 from the Game 3. Hard to blame them, uh, and it's been little tweaks here and there, but there's a lot of depth, a lot of capable guys who haven't drawn in yet in this postseason. They may later on, depending on matchups, needs, and, of course, the dreaded injury bug, which we hope Tucson avoids. Do you think at the end of that last Wednesday game where there's a little bit of a scrum there, was there any uh, thought from the, uh, the Barracuda that maybe they could take a couple of, uh, of Roadrunners with them? I'm sure there was part of the thought process to try to set a tone for tonight uh, because they have to do something. Uh, we, it was just a game where the, the Roadrunners embarrassed them the whole time. And uh, for them to come out tonight and give us everything they've got, which I fully expect in this first period, that's that's what they have to do. They have to bring their best hockey. Now, they have to play with the most edge they've played with all season because this is their last kick at it. If they lose tonight, they're done for the year. You know, when you look down, up and down the road on the roster and you see guys like Time Again, and you see Mike Sislow, and then you see a guy like Dylan Strom come in and, and perform the way he has. It's really a unique balance, isn't it? It is a unique balance. Um, this team wasn't the most physical team at the beginning of the year. I think they've grown into that role a little bit. Um, it was a lot of uh, skill, and it still is a lot of skill, but I think the physical play took a little time for guys to kind of grow into. Were you surprised at what Dylan Strom brought back to you after being his little stint with the Coyotes at the end of the season? Not surprised, but pleased to see the growth continue. Uh, we've watched him grow all season long down here in Tucson. I think that was just another phase in his evolution. And then let's talk finally a little bit about the uh, acquisitions at the trade deadline. Some of the guys that came in here with Carter Camper, I, I guess being the, the real mainstay of it, but that was pretty big at the trade deadline to bring those guys in, wasn't it? It really was. Trevor Murphy was another big acquisition. Those guys have been huge for this team. Murphy had the best plus minus of any defenseman down the stretch for Tucson. He's been tremendous in the playoffs. Camper, big impact in game three, playing on that line with Krause, finishing his checks in Kempe. Uh, those guys were going, and they were a great matchup against the top line for the Barracuda. Eliminated the Rudolph Spalsers line altogether. So we get through this uh, first five-game series, and then it becomes a real seven-game series. What do you predict for the future? Texas is going to be a tough matchup. They were the exact opposite in the postseason they were in the regular season. Right. Regular season, they could score goals and couldn't keep them out. In their playoff series, they didn't score much, but they allowed less. And so Mike McKenna's been playing really well for Tucson. They're going to have to absolutely keep bombing pucks to the net, bodies in front of the net, and they're going to have to make life hard for Texas uh, going into the next round if that's the opponent. So I asked your radio partner last week who he'd like to see in the Calder Cup Finals, and he said he'd love to see a Toronto-Tucson matchup 
How good would that be? That would be great because it's close to my hometown of Buffalo. Right. Uh, I was rooting for Rochester, but they're out now. So right. anybody within a three-hour drive of Buffalo, I'll be happy to see it fun. Quite the contrast between Toronto and Tucson weather-wise. It really is. In the end of May and first part of June, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Tom, have a great call. Thanks for taking some time again tonight, and uh, go Roadrunners, right? All right. Thanks, Scott. Okay, it's Fantastic Friday. It's an Oxyball Fantastic yeah. Friday. We're not talking players tonight. We're talking fans. <laughs> We're at the Tucson Arena. We got one of the diehards here, Katie Frenchick, right? That's Katie? right, yeah. Oh, not bad on the first try. <laughs> Katie, I know you're, uh, you're a longtime fan of the World Runners, even though you've only been here two years. Yep. You're a diehard, right? Yep, absolutely. So tell me how you got affiliated with uh, hockey and the World Runners. Oh, my gosh. Well, Ever since we were really little, we were uh, playing hockey. I grew up in Michigan, so of course a uh, fan of a certain team out there, which I won't mention right now. But uh, yeah, I've always loved hockey. Um, played hockey when I lived in Colorado for a while, and uh, was so excited coming back to Tucson and having a team. So how excited was it to have the Roadrunners come here, an AHL affiliate? And uh, you know, be the affiliate of the Coyotes too, right? Yeah, I mean, absolutely unreal. I, I, I cannot tell you how exciting it was to have them here because living a life without hockey is not a life worth living at all. Oh, <laughs> I agree. So I hope it's that. <laughs> now, I see you got the playoff beard on. I, yeah. I don't think it's real, so we're gonna let you go ahead and pull it down if you want. <laughs> <laughs> but tell, tell me the beard and playoff beard. I got mine going. Yeah, hey, you gotta grow that flow, bro. <laughs> you know, I can't grow one, I had to buy one. So, you know, getting in that playoff spirit. Absolutely, and the weather out here in Tucson it was phenomenal yes. Wednesday night, the first night of the home the home part of this, the series. But yes. What did you think when you walked in and saw oh, all that white? That was so awesome, absolutely. There, there were so many people here, the energy here was absolutely unreal. It was exactly what we needed. I think uh, the team seemed to really appreciate it. They did such a phenomenal job. Got uh, shut out for another one night. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was talking to everybody, including players, about the uniqueness about the fact that they started on the road. Yeah. I said, was there any concern that, that you might lose those two road games and come home facing elimination? <laughs> did you have that thought at all? Uh, no, I don't think so. I thought it was pretty exciting and, and uh, actually pretty smart on their behalf because even if they did lose the first two at home, that still means another, uh, you know, at least one at home. So, or the first two on the road, at least another one at home. So, um, no, I think it's fabulous. And they always do a great job on the road anyway. So, I was never worried. <laughs> I, I know you're a Roadrunner fan, number one, but tell me about your full-time job. You're very unique. You're, you're with the military, yes, correct? Yes, so I am a professional athlete for the U.S. Army. I compete in a sport called dressage, which is an Olympic sport. And your husband's also military? He, he's retired, actually. Oh, yes. okay. Yeah, he spent 28 years in the military, in the Army. So, why Tucson? How did you end up in Tucson? My whole family ended up here in Tucson. Okay. Um, I, I grew up here. Um, I, I met my husband, uh, got deployed a few times. We traveled all over the United States, uh, across the world, actually. And um, when it came time for him to retire, it just was a natural place to come home to. I mean, I, I do consider this my home. So you've been in the arena now for two years. Tell me if you think Tucson fans have figured out ice hockey. Yeah, I think so. You know, more and more we're starting, because we always talk about, hey, come to a game, come to a game. Um, and more and more we're starting to run into people who have actually been to the game. They know nothing about hockey, but they're super into it. Um, yeah, I, I think I think that the Roadrunners specifically have done a fabulous job of really growing the game here. So, yeah, it's great. So what's it going to be like when this team gets to the Calder Cup Finals? Oh my gosh, indescribable. <laughs> and, we're, and we're hitting 120 outside, and yeah. you're able to come inside and watch ice hockey. It's so amazing. I am sweating my tail off on the walk over here. <laughs> it's perfect when I get here. I'm going to give everybody a good look at what your outfit is tonight. The boots are one of a kind, right? Yeah. <laughs> How about the Finland jersey? Now, What's the tie into the Finland jersey? What's that? What's the tie into the Finland jersey? Well, my brother gave it to me. I have no idea where he got it from, but I love it. <laughs> but it's white, right? So yeah. it's looking good? Yeah. See, I've already got a Roadrunner jersey. I've got a uh, Coyotes jersey. I don't have a white one, so I'm going to have to go out and get one. But that's what okay. I have for now. 
Katie, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Enjoy the game. Enjoy the series. And yeah. Let's go all the way to the, the Calder Cup Finals. Call the Cup, baby. <laughs> Yeah, of course. It, it was good to get uh, a little insurance goal there from uh, Garland. So, of course, that was huge for us. And uh, uh, I play a little bit more. I relaxed after that. I know you're focused on scoring, but what, what do you say about Aiden going back to back shutouts? Yeah, he's been great for us. He, he's a really good goalie. And uh, uh, I think we're playing good defensively, too. So, But he definitely helped us back there. He's, he's unbelievable. How can you categorize that defense after giving up six goals in the game, too? Yeah, we weren't ourselves that game, so we knew when we came back here in our home rank that uh, we need to play better and uh, start with the defense. And uh, I thought we played really good defense in these two games. This is the, fir this is the first uh, series win for the, the Coyotes AHL team since '97. You remember what you were doing then? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> How old were you? Uh, how old? Nine. Uh, yeah, nine years old. Um, you know, we, I, I don't think we turn over quite as many pucks as we did in the first two games there, but I thought it would compete. Uh, you know, we, we, were, we played harder um, on pucks, harder on, on men. Um, you know, I had the first two games, we kind of felt it out to see what it was going to be like, and then we decided to play our game. And obviously, Hillings played well for us as well, so um, you know, now we're going to have another task. This next team plays a little bit differently than these guys do, so uh, we're going to have to be ready for that. It's all about you know the hot goalie in, in the playoffs, and you guys have that now at least in the back to back. What are you seeing in Aiden these last two games that maybe you haven't seen earlier? I just think we're playing better in front of him. Um, you know, I think he's battling to find pucks right now too, and, and that's made a big difference. You, know, you can see him looking around trying to find pucks, and, and uh, you know, I, think our, I think our defense is doing a little better job boxing out and a little forward. So um, I, I think it's a collective group right now. I mean, there's no one guy wins anything. Team definitely helps, but um, you know you need everybody in playoffs, all four lines and all six D, and, um, you know, and that's what we had. I thought it was a good, good group after the last two games. I know you're focused on the next series, but did you kind of have a sense of relief after you guys won this series? I mean, I'm already moving on to the next one, so I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I guess. Uh, um, you know, we're already trying to figure out how, I mean, they've had a couple days to get ready. They didn't know where they were going to play, um, but we're going to have to get some guys rested up and, and uh, you know, we're going to have to cut through and get through a lot of film you know, over the next couple of days. What do you remember about Texas from the regular season? They're quick. They're fast. Um, you know, they, they got, their goaltending has been real good too, uh, playoffs so far. So uh, they're a quick team. They play fast. Um, they score a lot of goals. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a good test for us. What was the home home ice advantage uh, like with uh, with the whiteout and everything these last couple games? Uh, it was two games and two games. So I mean, <laughs> it, it wasn't much of a home ice, I guess. Um, you know, but it was nice. I mean, our our crowd's always loud, and this building's a loud building. And, uh, you know, the, the whiteout was fun last night and tonight it was great again. You know, our, our fans never let us down that way. And, and it's been, you know, our boys have fed off it. And we've definitely played better at home than we did on the road, so uh, that's a good sign. What does it mean to have a veteran guy like Campbell who's I think he's played in about 60 playoff games, AHL playoff games in his career? Oh, uh, yeah, in all honesty, he's, I, I think his last two games have been the best two games I've seen him play, so. Um, you know, that, that, that's what you need out of your vets is, is guys, these guys to, to rise and, and show our young guys the way. You know, we got some talented young hockey players, but uh, this playoff hockey and, and pro hockey is new for them. So uh, we need to really rely on those guys. And, you know, Atsuki has been, has been unbelievable. And, uh, you know, it's uh, so good in the room with these young guys, uh, with the whole team. And, uh, you know, and I'm happy to see them get rewarded and get some points. Last question.
need you to support Wildcat hockey. The Wildcats are back in action, and it's time to show your U of A pride at the TCC Arena. Please call for tickets or come to the TCC box office. U of A hockey is affordable and fun for the entire family. We need you. We need you. We need you to support U of A Wildcat hockey.